It was a slow and boring day at the mall in downtown Gormanac, as pedestrians walked the streets going about their day commuting to work, grocery shopping, or meeting up to hang out with friends. It was on such a day that the intercoms and mass communication devices of all locations known to foster human life crackled to life, signalling an emergency report to be delivered to the populace en masse. Many groaned, believing it to be yet another drill, while others carried on thinking nothing of it. But this will be a day remembered for eons to come. A woman's voice, young but rough, spoke. I am Celise de Alamont, decorated General 0-10, for those undereducated or unaware. This is currently the highest military rank in Sol's Galactic Armada. I speak to you casually as I understand that in recent years, most humans across the galaxy have long forgotten most of Earth's native languages, and I understand that translation devices tend to translate smoother when the dialogue is casual in nature. As of 1608 Earth hours, or for again those unaware as of eight minutes ago, the entire United Senate of Grestian has declared war on humankind. Thankfully, the Grestian are currently undergoing their pre-war baguette and pre-war ceremonial sacrifices, thus allowing me the time to send this message out. Do not mistake this as a simple declaration of war on Sol or Earth. This is a declaration of intent for genocide. I warn all humans out there, do not trust any Grestian you meet and make your way immediately to whatever bunker or shelter is available to you, and remain safe there for the foreseeable future. Finally, I have a final message for all humankind out there, in the stars. On behalf of Sol's entire military industrial complex, we issue the following warrant. For every confirmed kill of a Grestian, a reward of 1000 credits shall be awarded. These credits can be directly exchanged for, or you may request equal value in any food, trade good, or land, which can be purchased within the Coalition of Planets and the Galactic Senate's worlds. Once again, this is Celise de Alamont, Decorated General 0-10 of the Sol Galactic Armada. I wish you all well, and good hunting. Gwilax pressed pause on his datapad and looked to his students, all of which had a mix of emotions on their faces, ranging from confusion, pride, and even disgust. This was the first galaxy-wide subspace transition ever recorded to be transmitted across all known worlds, with the exclusion of those which hosted primarily the Grestian species. One student raised their claw and waved it a bit overly frantically, thus hitting their neighbour. Gwiliax reacted just as quick to point at them as to prevent another possible interspecies quarrel from breaking out over yet another misunderstanding. Sir, why did the, uh, Grestians, why did they declare a war of extermination against humans? And more importantly, why did they think they could win? Gwiliax rolled two of his eyes opposite to his students, while trying his best not to roll those facing him. Apparently, they had an extreme level of culture shock when introduced to humans, and even after over a decade, they still couldn't make any sense of humans. Eventually, they got it in their heads that humans were mass genocidal freaks of nature that enjoy killing at every waking moment of the day. Why, you ask? Well, because humans have a symbiotic digestive system. Rather than relying simply on pure chemical synthesis, they have billions upon billions of microorganisms, living inside their intestines, which break down their food for them. The Grestians saw this as enslavement and mass genocide, because they themselves were, well, basically giant single-celled organisms themselves. Gwiliax was going to continue, as that seemed like a good springboard for his next point, when another student simply cut him off at the pass. So the Grestians were basically giant snotballs? A torrent of suppressed sniggers and jeering followed from there. After a few minutes, Gulliax was finally able to calm the rebel down enough to continue. Well, that is one way to look at them, but their biology is a lot more complex than that. Now, as I was... Another student cut him off again. 
I've never heard or seen a sentient snobble before. Do they slink off into the sewers or something after losing the war? Another student, an actual human this time, followed up. Obviously we kicked their blubbery butts so hard they flew right out of the galaxy. And yet again, Grillax had to at least try using something to spring off of, to try and keep the kid's attention locked back onto his lecture. Bats were kicked for sure, but it wasn't out of the galaxy. Rather, well I guess we were going to get to the part which was the reason we sent out those agreement forms to your parents. Another kid. Finally, the bloody details. All the kids followed in a short chant. Bloody details, bloody details, bloody details. Did they coordinate that ahead of time? Eh, whatever. Gulliax thought to himself. Yes, the bloody details. As you clearly heard from the recording I played earlier, the decorated general 0-10, Celeste Element, delivered the news of a war for genocide in a rather casual manner. This was due to some limitations of the AI language models used back then, to translate between races and across disparate language structures. However, this did allow the humans to hide one of their greatest weapons in plain sight. As I'm sure you all heard, but I will requote for those with poorer short-term memory. Clearing one of his long nostril trunks, he spoke in a more casual tone. Finally... I have a final message for all humankind out there in the stars. On behalf of Seoul's entire military industrial complex, we issue the following warrant. For every confirmed kill of a Grestian, a reward of 1,000 credits shall be awarded. These credits can be directly exchanged for, or you may request equal value in any food, trade good, or land, which can be purchased within the Coalition of Planets and the Galactic Senate's worlds. Now can anyone here explain to me why this, out of all things, won the war? A wave of confusion passed through the students, as a few even leaned over to one another to try and work this out between them. But of course, in the end, the first to raise their hand was the human. Gunex waited to see if anyone else wanted to take a guess first, but it soon became apparent the others wanted to see what the human would say. Okay, Joey, what is your guess? With a bit of hesitancy, the boy spoke. I mean, a thousand credits is kind of a lot of money, especially if we account for inflation, that'd be, what, five thousand credits today? Gloglock, one of the Morbill's children, chuckled at that and couldn't help but jeer. So, what, everyone? All you humans just up and join the war? Even the old grannies and little toddlers too? For what? A bit of money? Gulliax cleared his trunk again, making a sound akin to that of a trombone, which shocked the kids as it was not translated. But some remembered that was Gulliax's species method of laughter. You're actually not too far off there, Glocklock. Indeed, everyone joined the war. The room went silent as the realisation of what Grillyx had just said slowly dawned on the children. Everyone, me, another Morbill child, couldn't help but exclaim, Everyone? Grillyx responded as quickly as he could to stop the incoming wave of incredulity. Well, not everyone, but most did. After all, what Joey said was right. A thousand credits back then was a lot of money. A human could feed his entire family on that amount of credits for an entire week, or pay their entire month's rent with that, and still have some to spare. Glocklock couldn't help but ask, But it's just money. How is that supposed to make any random human into a warrior, or, or, or willing to kill? You can't tell me humans will just kill you if you offer them a bit of money, right? Everyone in the room turned slowly to look at Joey, who sunk into his desk. Gulliax couldn't help but sigh at that. Apparently, yes, they will. He had to catch himself before the kids could turn to Joey again. Not all of them, but uh, um, a significant portion of them might. After all, as you all know, humans come from a death world, 
which means their survival instincts are several times higher than anyone else within the wider galactic community. And, well, as Joey said, it was a lot of money. <laughs>